my name is Emilio Silva. I am the grandson of a missing person during the Spanish dictatorship from 1939 to 1975. During a lot of, of years, I listened in Spain talking about our transition is a perfect transition. We resolve the recovery of democracy with no blood, no, with no conflicts. All my all my life, listen this question. I study political science in the principal university in Madrid, and all my teachers talk about the Spanish transition is an example for all the world. All the big countries have to come here to copy our transition to left quite the past. <coughs> including in, in 2006, a uh, representation of the Truth Commission of South Korea came to Spain to know if they have to choose the Spanish model of impunity or, or they have to resolve the questions about violations of human rights. No? In, in Latin America, when a uh, uh, regime break down with problems with human rights violations, uh, an important Spanish foundation go there with a very big exhibition about the Spanish transition. You have to choose the Spanish way and you have to leave the past and to grow economically. You no, know, it's the Spanish model, more or less. In 2000, I am journalist. I, I was writing a novel about the history of not of my family, but in the place of my family were living in the nor northwest of Spain. And I phoned uh, a friend of my father one day and he told me, I know the place of the grave of your grandfather. And then I asked, is too far? Arsenio, this man said, not 10 kilometers. And then I, I was there. I phoned my father. I am in the grave of your father. And I asked uh, in my mind a lot of questions, no? And I wrote an article in a Spanish newspaper with the title, my grandfather also was a missing. Because in Spain, we never use the word missing. No, we have a, an euphemistic word, it's a paseado. It's a person who go to work and never back again. It's an euphemistic word to hide the crime. And, and I wrote this article because in the 19... 98, the Spanish justice detained Pinochet in London, and the Spanish justice uh, start trials about uh, dictatorships so far from Spain, no? Argentina, Chile, Guatemala, Rwanda, all the problems so far from Spain have the possibility to, to have an open door in the Spanish justice. No? This is a the activity of my Congress, my parliament, the Spanish parliament, about the question of the victims of the Franco's regime uh, from the end of the, of the dictatorship to the year uh, 2015. No? In the left side, we can see a, a, a country in white no? with no memory any activity about the victims. No? We are talking about thousands of missing persons, more than 100,000. Uh, we have more than 2,000 mass graves in all the country, the, the country in the peninsula and in the islands. We have a lot of people missing. And my parliament never talked about this question. No? They have a special commission during the transition about the missing Spaniards in the Latin America dictators, principally in Argentina and Chile, but they never want to talk about the question of the of the missing persons of our dictators. We export memory and import oblivion, more or less. No? When my, the grave, the mass grave of my grandfather was opened by a group of archaeologists and forensic doctors, was the first intervention with technical support and DNI tests. My grandfather is the first victim of the Franco's regime, the Spanish dictatorship, identified by the DNI test. At this moment, I only want to resolve a family problem. I want to put the bones of my grandfather with the bones of my grandmother. She died two years before I found the grave. And But during the exhumation, a group of relatives of 
different places of the northwest of Spain, arrive there and say, I, I am looking for my brother, I am looking for my father, I am looking for my grandmother. And then we decide to create an association to help these people in this area because then we don't know nothing about the the big name of missing persons in Spain. We don't have information. We don't have historical researches. The academy, the Spanish academy, look to another place. They don't want to show to the Spanish society the the results of the repression of the dictatorship because we have a very long dictatorship and we have an elite culturally, economically, politically, so uh, academically are children of the Franco's regime, of the dictatorship, because the dictatorship was very long, 40 years. They create the elite for the transition during the 50s, 60s, 70s. In the Spanish university, there are more or less only children of the winners of the war, children of the Franco's regime. No? And then in different political parties, but they manage the transition to democracy, the children of the regime, and they built uh, an amnesty law in the Spanish parliament in 1977 uh, with the support of the principal left political parties with opposite or forbidden parties during the dictatorship. They decide to support the amnesty. During a lot of years, the Spanish politicians say it's an, this amnesty law is for the victims of the Spanish a dictatorship, but a victim of the Spanish dictatorship in democracy didn't need an amnesty law because they are not criminals. The people who need an amnesty law are the perpetrators. No? And when we start to open grace and to go to the courts, the Spanish courts, to talk about we have found uh, bones with violent signals in a mass grave, uh, all the courts say, no, no, we have an amnesty law. We cannot uh, trial these uh, uh, violations of human rights. I'm sorry. And then we we understand that the amnesty law, like in the most of the countries, is an auto-amnesty law. When we start to open the grace, we have to decide what happens. No, we can wait for the justice, or we have to look for the missing, no? It's an um, ethical or moral decision in our group. And we decide we cannot wait for the justice because the justice is looking to another place and the Spanish justice don't want to know not, nothing about these crimes, no? And by other way, we, we know very old people, 80s or 90s, looking for parents or husbands or brothers, and we cannot wait. And then we start to open the mass graves. No? In 23 years, we opened more than 200 mass graves in different parts of Spain. At this moment, we are in Galicia, in the Northwest of Spain, open a mass grave with four bodies, appears uh, yesterday morning. We don't have any support of the Spanish government. We only have, uh, volunteers from more than 20 countries come here to help us. And we start to open the grace because we want to create a mirror for the Spanish society. No? At the beginning, we decide what happens with the pictures of the of the bones. No, Could be public pictures or have to be private pictures and pictures for the reports of the archaeologists and forensic doctors. But we decide to show the horror of the grave, no? And a, a mass grave is like a mouth. And the process of to recovery the memory is a conversation. At the beginning, I start to talk with many fear the relatives. And then also start to talk the archaeologists and the forensic doctors and the journalists and the neighbors of the small villages with the graves. And then we are building a polyphonic conversation in the Spanish society. The courts never come to the conversation where in 2008, the same judge who detained Pinochet in London, Martisar Garzot, tried to open a juridical process in Spain against the Franco's crimes. 
and now he's not a judge. He was a criminal because he tried to trial the Franco's regime. No, is the is the the power of impunity in Spain. No, and we have two principal causes. One of them is looking for the missings, and the other one have to to be or have relation with the education. No? In this, uh, you are watching a picture of some uh, scholar books. One of them say is for, uh, the new scholar books will say that the coup d'etat in 1936 was a coup d'etat. This new is from two years ago. And during 45 years, the scholar books are hiding the history or taking it's not a coup d'etat, it's uh, uh, an order movement of the Spanish uh, military people to create order. During a lot of years, 40 years of demo in democracy, we have this information to, to teach the new citizens, no? Or in the book, uh, Downside, in the, in the left, our scholar books talking about one of the most important poets in Spain. In the left, totally, is Federico Garcia Lorca, is the most important poet of the 20th century in Spain. He's still missing. And the, the, the scholar books say he was in Granada where he lives the, his last moments. No, no. It's, it's, for me, it's impressionant. No? He lives his last moments. No, he died his last moment because so a group of fascist people killed him, no? And Antonio Machado have to cross the Pyrenees to France at the end of the war. He died some days after. And the scholar books say he moved with his family to France, no? Only, only, because they are hiding all the time the repression, no? We have a political, we have a very uh, important country producing ignorance producing ignorance, no? all the time producing ignorance. And when we open the graves, we start to look for uh, to the past through the, through the grave, no? through the idea of the crimes. We start to create the idea of the crimes. No? And we start to show the horror of the poems, the ballads, the objects, glasses, or, or pens, or coins or small pieces of paper eh, a lot of years after with the bones, no? And we start to talk to the Spanish society this question. And I think we broke the silence of our parliament, of our institution, of our academics, of uh, a country uh, dominated by the Franco's elite today, no? Today, I live in the autonomous community of Madrid. We have five important universities. We don't have a research about the repression of Franco in the autonomous community of Madrid in the year 2023. They prefer to talk about another questions. They prefer to touch this question of the violations of human rights. No? And we are trying to break this silence and to put this question in the justice, Spanish justice. In 2010, we went to the Argentine justice. The only juridical process in the world about the Franco's crimes is in, in the Argentinian justice. We opened uh, the, the process in 2010 because the Spanish courts don't want to open the door for the Franco's victims. This process is open from near 13 years ago, very slow, but it's the only court in the world uh, taking information, taking testimonies of the victims, and perhaps the most important archive about the Francos and the Spanish uh, crimes are in Argentina, in this court, in this Argentine court. We want to say if my country is the winner of the international justice, no, because Spain uh, open juridical processes about a lot of dictatorship and problems of human rights so far in Spain. What happens if we are going to another country and this country say to the Spanish uh, state, I start to trial your crimes, no? Because you defend the universal justice. And 
at the first moment, the Spanish institution start to broke the process of Argentina. They don't listen to the court, they don't help, they put a lot of problems, they put a lot of lies, and we have a lot of problems with the process. But it's the only process in Spain. Still today, for example, we have in the right up the picture, we have uh, this Arco de la Victoria, it's a monument, who celebrate the victory of Franco, Hitler, and Mussolini. The first fascist victory in Europe was here in Spain, the beginning of the Second World War. And still today, we have this monument. This monument also is celebrating the crime of my grandfather, the crime of all the missions, the 300 concentration camps. One concentration camp is specifically for homosexual people. The vacuums of poliomyelitis is only for the children of the winners of the war. We are living like in an upper head during the Franco's regime. And still today, my country is celebrating with this monument, monument the victory of the perpetrations of human rights, of violations of human rights. This monument is very near of the official residence of the Spanish, the president of the Spanish government. All the Spanish president from 1977 to today go through the mon near the behind the monument to the thing, to the parliament the spanish parliament any of them say i cannot support a monument celebrating the fascist victory in spain no but we still today are a very happy country a very noisy country a very sunny country what we are a very uh, a very sad country for the victims because I have to walk near this monument in my in my city in Madrid. No? Uh, when we open, start to open the graves, we start to know some things happen before we we start to open the graves. You know, after the dictatorship, a group of relatives in Spain start to look for the missions with no archaeologic doctors, with no forensic doctors, only with the love, their hands, and take all the bones and put all the bones in the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Start a move, a movement, a social movement to get justice for the victims. But in 1981, we have a coup d'etat, another coup d'etat. In 23, 1981, and all the people looking for mission stopped and left the graves in silence because they have a lot of fear. 40 years of dictatorship is a very big production of fear. Still today, we go to small villages and there are people saying, I don't know nothing. And they were in the place of the crime, but they prefer to talk about it. Still today, because the, the uh, Aussians, uh, sorry with my English, when the government don't do nothing, do nothing, the fear have a very, very long life. When the culture don't have a very important film about the perpetration, the violations of human rights in Spain, the fear have a very, very, very long life. When the parliament don't talk about this question, the fear have a very, very, very long life. And one of our problems are still today the fear. And the history is very uh, important to learn. In 18 July, 1936, Spain have a coup d'etat. A fascist coup d'etat. And millions of people go to the streets to defend democracy. In 1981, we have another coup d'etat. Nobody go to the streets to defend democracy because we learn the lesson of the fear. And we prefer to stay at home waiting what happens. In 50 years, we learn to let the coup d'etat growing, no? My grandfather was a person who, a civilian, but he opposite to the coup d'etat in 1936, and is the reason he was killed, no? And during the exhumations, I start to know what happens with the parents during the 70s and the grandchildren looking for the grandparents, no? One day I know this picture. In the left side, you can see a picture of Castellao is a, a 
very intellectual person from Galicia. He was died in Buenos Aires, in Argentina, in exile in 1960. And this, uh, a miner arrived to the exhumation of one grave and take me this poster. No, this poster was painted in the year 1937 during the strong repression of civilians, Republican civilians in the in the Galicia region. No, and this man made this a picture in the right side of the picture. So far, you can see crutches. They are far from a cemetery, and they are putting civilian bodies, dead bodies in a grave, no? like the graves we are looking for today. We not, we never look for graves from the war. We are looking for graves of civilians killed by the fascist people. And there is a sentence in the downside of the picture. And the sentence says, they don't bury bodies, they bury seeds. And when I saw this picture 20 years ago, was very, very emotional for me, very impression, no? Because we are taking the result of the seeds. Uh, the human, the humans are very stupid when we write the human rights after the biggest violations of human rights and not before. But the damage of these people have to create a, a culture of human rights in Spain, no? In 10 years ago, Amnesty, International Amnesty make a report about the principal, the 50 principal countries in Europe Union about the education in human rights. And this, Spain is the last, and it's not a casualty, it's a political decision. Because we want to create as a, politica, a political culture with no problems with the past, with no problem with the art of, of victory, with no problem with impunity. No? And the seeds in the graves have uh, to show the Spanish society what happens and have to be a lesson for us to create a better culture of human rights. No. Now many people in Spain in 23 years have seen exhumations. And I think it's very important because I, I said it's a mirror. I am the result of these uh, mass graves. My country is the result of this violence. And I have the responsibility to do something. No? And I want to finish with this, uh, with this another picture of Castellà from the 1937 year. No? My father, I was, I, I grew with, uh, my father, with nine years old, have to leave the school because the fascist people killed his father. Has have to leave the school and never back again. No. My education is in contact with the trauma completely. No, sometimes the academic people used to talk about post memoria. I have fifty-seven years old. I am not post memoria. I grow with the trauma near the trauma talking with me. The trauma talking about my grandfather and saying to me, "You cannot talk about this question out of home." No, and then. I think it's very important because this memory is still alive. It's part of my emotions. My uh, my life is completely mm, mixed with this memory. And for me, this picture is also very important. It's, and also a picture of Catelao, this deaf man with two children looking at the deaf man. No? And there is a sentence in the downside of the picture who said, the last lesson of the teacher. And the last lesson of the teacher is to show his crime, his death, no? And for us, it's very important when we open a grave and we show the pictures of the people, we are creating a human right teachers, no? Because they are talking through the bones, through the holes of the ballots, through the objects, through the sad life of the relatives talking near the grave during the exhumation. No? And I think it's very important to put in the public space these teachers, men and women, defending the first democracy in Spain no? during the 30s. 
the academic people used to say in Spain after the Franco regime, after the dictatorship, we have the transition to democracy. No, we have the recovery of our democracy. We made a transition to democracy in the 30s. We have general elections with universal suffrage, male and female, in the 19 November 1933. No, and we need to learn the history of these people because it's the possibility to have a better country and it's part of the justice we can create without court justice. No, it's a social justice. Is an educational justice, is a citizen justice, no? Because our courts don't want to talk about this question. When I was teen, my grand, my father used to tell me, I tried to translate this, this expression. If you leave uh, the people who live with dreams, die by the reality, no? Then my father is giving me an order. You cannot dream. Because when your grandfather dreamed, they was killed, and you have to live your dreams, and it, and it's a very sad sentence. But the new generations have the responsibility to break these kind of orders, you know, to break the silence, and the grandchildren. And now we have a, a great grandchildren in the exhumations today in Galicia have the responsibility to break this legacy to the new generations, no? because this problem is too long, too long. We can, for example, we have the example of the US, they have a civil war 80 years after the Spanish civil war, and still today they, are, they have conflicts, political conflicts, because they no. don't resolve, have a good resolution of the war. No? And in the Virginia states, some months ago, they have a new law to destroy a, 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 a sculpture of the slavers. No? And, and I, I think we also have to think that we have to resolve this question because we cannot uh, give this legacy to the new generation. Thank you.